we're about to show you how to get the refrigerator removed and repaired at your home. First thing you want to do is shut off your propane supply to your motorhome. Then you want to level up your motorhome reasonably well, get it as level as you can. Then you want to plug in a power, a power supply to the motorhome because you might want to run your AC in the motorhome while you do the job if it's very hot outside and you'll have lights to work in there because the job is going to be done inside the motorhome. That fridge will not come out of the motorhome. So we're going to do those things and then we're going to start and show you how to remove the fridge. Prior to doing any work on the outside of your fridge, you want to make sure you locate the propane source of the motorhome. It's behind a panel. On this particular motorhome, it's located here. You're going to open up the access door. You're going to find a big tap valve. You're going to make sure you turn that clockwise to the right as far as it'll go. And that ensures your propane gas is off before you do the job. That's for safety. Always have that turned off. Before we get started in our cooling unit removal and replacement, here are the tools we're going to require to do the job. First of all, we have a ball peen hammer, a cordless drill, a can of penetrating fluid, a Phillips screwdriver or Phillips bit, a 5 16 bit, a curved screwdriver, a small pair of needle nose pliers, a small crescent wrench, side cutter pliers, needle nose pliers, a level, a putty knife, a Zacto knife, a tube that comes with the cooling unit, it's the heat conductive thermal mastic, you'll have that with the unit, a 7 inch 2x4, a 4.5 inch 1x3, and a 4x4 four four steel plate of, of about a quarter inch thickness will be fine, a roll of electrical tape and a large crescent wrench and of course a caulking gun from the thermal mastic. So with those tools on hand that's everything that would be required to do a change out on a refrigerator. Okay now let's get started. We're going to take our access panel off of the motorhome behind the fridge and you can put that aside wherever you wish out of the way. The first thing we have to do is unhook the propane line to the refrigerator, which is right here into this gas valve. So you take two uh, adjustable wrenches, you put one adjustable here, the other one here, and remove that line from the uh, refrigerator. So you put your adjustable on there like so, get a good hold of it there, put your other line on here, or your other wrench on here. Make sure you've got a good grip of things. And then you're gonna loosen that line off. They're on there pretty hard, so you're gonna have to give it a good torque. But now that we've got that loose, and there's no danger here, because the propane supply is off of the motorhome. Now that the line is off, you're gonna put a plug in the line. That way there, people can continue to use their propane devices in the motorhome and you can turn the propane fuel back onto the motorhome without any dangers of propane leakage. The next step, you're going to unplug the AC lines from the refrigerator. There's two on this fridge. One's for the water ice maker and one for the refrigerator itself. Remove those and at the same time you can turn off the water line here that supplies the ice maker to the fridge. Isolate the 12 volt live wire by taping it up with some tape so it doesn't short up against anything metal around the fridge, like so. Here we are inside our refrigerator 1200 series. So to remove this, you're going to open up both freezer doors on the top and you're going to see little plastic plugs here that you're going to take a blade or a knife and open them up. Take, remove those little things because there's screws underneath there and there'll be four on the top and there's going to be four on the bottom of this fridge. So remove those little plugs 
and you can remove those four screws from the top and then we'll go to the bottom and do the same on the bottom of the refrigerator we're down at the bottom of the fridge the same as the top we're going to pop off all these screw covers and our screws are underneath they're phillips on this one so you're going to take your covers off and remove your phillips screws from the refrigerator there'll be four of them and put them i use one of the crispers out of the fridge to put all my parts in so you remove those and then that strip will come off very easily one more to go folks Therefore, and you'll see how easy the strip will come off. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Cut away, Robert, for a minute there. Now, we're back outside. We've unhooked the inside portion of the fridge. Now get somebody to come over and give you a hand to push the cooling and fridge out of the hole. So give it a hard push. Again, one, wait, try the bottom two. Sometimes it's covered. One, two, three. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, again. Okay, good. It moved. It's going to take, you know, take some good shoving there. Now we're going to go inside. Okay, we've given the fridge a shove from the outside, and you can see how it's moved out of the cabinet it's in. So now you get a friend of yours, and you have to pull and wiggle it out of that cabinet area. At the same time, watch your ceiling and see if anything may obstruct you coming out if there's something in the way like a smoke detector or a light you may or may not have to remove those things to allow the fridge to come out so you get a friend of yours come over and like i've got timmy here and he's gonna we're gonna start wiggling okay you're ahead of me Tim. way ahead of me well push her in a little bit buddy right, you're ahead of me wait uh. Push yours in a little bit, maybe. Okay, there, okay. Yeah, okay. There, okay. He's not easy, Robert. It's a fucking hell of a job, is what it is. Okay. Alright. Now, I'll be here. You don't have to show them this shit. They can wiggle it out the fucking way they want. Oh, okay, now. As a refrigerator comes out of the cabinet, you're going to see that it gets to a tipping point. You want to straighten up the refrigerator and continue to bring it out. And then when you get it three quarters of the way or 90% of the way, you have to reach in behind or at the bottom of the fridge and you've got to grab it and set it to the floor. So, are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three to the floor. And bring it down. We're going to now move the fridge out to the center of the motorhome. Okay, let's go move it out here. Okay. All right, then we're going to stand it back up. And we're going to turn it with the front of the fridge facing the front of the motorhome. And it's heavy, so you want to have some good able bodies doing this. There. Now fridge out you're going to take the two screws out of each handle in the door and remove that handle from the fridge door remove both of them so that when you lay the fridge down on the floor you won't damage those handles or break them the next step is you're going to remove the freezer plates so to do that there are two Phillips screws up in here there are two bolts 5 16 bolts here and two Phillips screws in on the side plate here and that'll bring this whole freezer plate system out of the fridge okay I've just removed the 5 16 bolts that are in here and the Phillips screws on this plate which will pull these plates out and it'll expose the freezer tubes in the fridge which you have to have access to to remove the cooling on it so there are the freezer tubes once you have the freezer plates out, you'll look inside and you're going to see six Phillips screws on, the, our, on our freezer tubes. Those six screws have to be removed and it'll allow the uh, coolant tubes in the back of it to come free. Okay, there's a little clip here holding the rack in place. You're going to pop that clip out of there. 
and it's going to allow you to slide your rack out of the way so you have access to your your cooling pins you have your thermistor sensor on your fins here pull it off your fins and just stick it out of your way there are six refrigerator fins located in at the bottom of this fin system you're going to take a cordless drill and you're going to go in there and remove those screws now that the screws are out you're going to pull those fins up and out of the way our freezer coils have a cooling unit connect to the refrigerant tubes here and it sends all the cold down into your freezer allowing your freezer to get good and cold and your ice maker to work we're now going to take the fridge and lay it down on its front and it'll give us room and access to remove the cooling system this is the next step next step here we're going to remove the burner cover accessing giving us access to the burner system just a couple of screws and that pulls right off. After you remove the front cover, the wind cover over the burner, we'll just pull off by itself and just set it aside. Next thing we're going to do here is we're going to remove the heating element wires. They go into a block here, so all you have to do to get them off is remove this one wire in the back here on this block. It's going to be in there pretty good but you're gonna to have to work it out of there. Okay, there's one and two. Step, we're gonna remove the burner screws. There's three screws down in here you have to remove to release the burner from the cooling unit. And you use just a cordless drill and a Phillips tip and that'll do the job for you. propane line going from the burner up to the propane block you got to remove that fitting up here so you can remove the system from the cooling unit because it's going to be in your way if you don't see that loosens the whole system off now you'll see that there's going to be several wires here going to your solenoid you can unhook those two wires going to your solenoid as well Now, you can just swing it aside like that. There's two other wires going to the thermistor. Don't worry about them. They're flexible. Just hang your system over the side like that. Next step, we're going to remove the power panel cover. You're just going to take one screw off of it there. You're going to take a screwdriver and just pry on the outer sides of this. And it lets you remove the cover from the unit. In here, you're going to see several components that wires go up over the cooling unit. So we have to remove them as well. And it's just plug and play. So you're going to squeeze and unplug that. And this one here can re remain. But look to see if there's any wires that are coming from this area that are going over the cooling unit that may affect your removal of the cooling unit. In this particular case, there are two screws down in here, Phillips so screws holding this whole panel in place. I'm going to remove them to allow me to take this whole system up out of the way to allow me to remove the cooling unit. Okay, you're going to take this ground wire off here. See this one here going to the system? Going to remove that and uh, just get it out of your way. Take that little nut off of there and uh, I screw it back onto the post so I don't forget it somewhere. That's just so there. You've got that ground wire off the, out of the way. Okay, so as you're working along here, you're going to remove anything that is attached to the cooling unit or that'll be in the way when you bring the cooling unit up. So follow the wiring, you're going to see there's some little tie wraps here, hooking the wiring to the cooling unit, snip them out of the way, and you got to free them up, because we want all this out of the way 
when we lift that cooling unit up. So anything that you see that will come with you on the cooling unit, unattach it. All right. Up here you see a tie wrap there. Snip that out of the way. There. Now you know that those wiring, this wiring is out of your way here. And that's what you want. Now we have a water line that goes up to your ice maker. We have to remove it because it's not going to come out with the cooling on it. So we got to, there's some uh, duct seal here that holds it in place. I'm going to peel away some of the duct seal. And in this case, there's a little clip here. If you pull very hard and carefully, that should come out. Boom, we got it out of there. We have a, a line here. It's electronic line. Wiring comes through this holder. We have to follow it down to the bottom of the cooling unit and we have to unhook the wiring that's involved here because when we lift the cooling unit up, this whole harness is going to come up through the cooling unit. You'll see it when we get to that step. So you can see what's involved here. I've got There's another ground wire attached to the bottom of the cooling unit down by the burner bracket. I can't get at it from where it's at right now. So follow the ground wire up and it's attached to a screw here. Let's take it off right there and get it out of our way there. When you unplug your wiring down here, don't worry about it. It's all color coded. You got black to black. You got white to white here in this little block. And then you've got a brown wire and a, and a green ground wire. And ground's always, green's always ground on these things. So you don't have to worry about it. They're all color coded and you can't go wrong. If you're not sure, mark them with some tape on each side of the wire when you unplug them. Once you get this wiring off, what I do is I tape it up with electrical tape so it's easier to pull through the hole up in the cooling unit when it's time to do that. So just wrap up your wires with some black tape to group them up in a, in a line so they're easier to come through the hole and easier to put back in the hole when it comes time to do that. So just take some black tape and tape them up. Okay, I like to use a cordless drill with a Phillips tip on the end of it for removing the cooling unit screws. They're fast. So we're going to take two screws out of the bottom here. There's one there and there's one here. Then we're going to walk around the cooling unit and find the other ones that are here holding it down. There's one in here. There's one midship here. Undo that one. There's this Phillips. Then you're going to see a couple up top here. Remove them. Round to the other end of the condenser. There's one in here. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that's all our screws that we need to remove at this point. Take a, a knife and you want to cut some tape around the cooling unit that may be attaching it to the fridge. Go around the edge of the cooling unit, wherever that here, and you'll see some tape at the bottom here. You'll want to cut into that tape because it'll hold the unit back from coming out. Just go all around the unit and take cut wherever you think there's some tape that's involved there. And it'll, it'll help remove the unit. You're going to get up on the top end here. And over here you're going to see a little set of wires. You're going to sort of make sure that, because originally they were over top of the unit like that, make sure you push them out of the way so that when it's time to pull the unit they're not going to be involved. You'll see a ridge of tape up top here. Cut down in there, get that all removed, it'll help pull the unit out. And usually there's some tape down the side here. Cut into that and get that out of the way. I've been giving this cooling unit a pretty good tug and, and it's giving me trouble coming up. So, see it, it's coming but it's, it's a hard deal. So, what I'm going to do to make things easier I'm going to remove this stack, which your new unit will come with. And by removing this stack, I'll be able to put a pry bar and a block of wood here and pry up on this pipe here, which will help me get the full unit out of the fridge. Okay, now I'm going to start taking off the stack. Well, it's just clipped on with a little clip. You squeeze the stack and these little clips come out here. So work your way down on the stack and remove it. And your new unit comes with a new stack, so don't worry too much about the stack. Alright, so I'm going to 
And there's insulation in there. The new unit comes with it, so don't worry about it. Pull that out of there. And we've removed the stack like that. This step here will make getting the cooling unit out a little easier. Get yourself a block 2x4 and a crowbar or a pry bar. And you want to get your 2x4 in here. And, and if you put it there and you fly up, you know that head's coming out now? So now it's going to make things coming up a lot easier. At this point you should have somebody to give you a hand. It's a two-man job. When you're lifting the cooling unit up out of the fridge, these two, this wire harness and this drip tube has to be fed through the holes as it's coming up so that they're remaining in there. You don't want to take them out. So as it's coming up, you're going to get these things fed through the foam block as it's coming out. You're going to lift the thing right out of the fridge and take it out of the motorhome. So as it's coming up, you can see this. I'm going to feed this through here and this through here as the whole unit comes up. So this unit gets pushed in there. This wiring harness gets pushed and pushed all the way through. You can hold it there and get it all the way through. So I've got that through. And this one here, as I say, you're going to feed that through. Alright. Then we can set the cooling unit aside or take it out of the motorhome and, and we'll show you a few things you have to do on the cooling unit out there. Okay, your heating elements have to be removed from your old cooling unit. Now, if you twist them side to side and they're loose, you can just work them out of the casing like that and just keep wiggling and it should come all the way down. Now, I've had them where they're, they're seeds in there, they won't move. And if they won't move, you take some penetrating fluid and you, you pour some penetrating fluid in these tubes. Let it sit for 10-15 minutes and take a punch or a long pipe, small pipe, and a hammer and put it on the end of them and tap them down loose to get them moving so you can remove them. But it's important to get these out of here because they got to go in your other unit. So this one here, they're not seized up, so they're coming out pretty easy. But they can be difficult, so if you have to, you soak them and you get them out that way. Because they've been in there for a long time, depending on how old your unit is. So there are the elements removed from here, and they have to go into the new one when you're when you're installing a new unit. Okay, the next step is you've got to remove this baffle. There's a clip wire here, you squeeze it, and it pulls out of this old unit. Very important, you take this out of the old unit and put it back in the new unit. If you don't, your fridge won't work properly on propane. When you get your new unit, you want to measure your old stack pipe and see how long it is. So you're going to put it on there and you want to measure that and it's, it's 40 inches long. You want to make sure on your new unit, the stack pipe is the same length. And in this case here, it's about 39 inches long. Now, one inch is not a big problem. But if you have two or three inches in length difference, then you better give us a call and we'll advise you what you have to do at that point because the baffle that you put in here has to sit at the bottom of the flue at the right spot. And if your flue pipe is too long and your baffle doesn't sit at the right spot, that may create a problem. And you can give us a call and we can advise you what to do at that point. Yeah, it should, the baffle should sit about one inch up inside this pipe. When it's all the way in, it should be about one inch up in this pipe. When you receive your unit, this is the old unit you took out. You have to measure three areas to put holes in your new unit. Now, one hole is for the power cords, one hole is for the drip tube in the fridge, and one hole is for the freezer ice maker water line. So, in order to get those holes located in the right spot on your new unit, you're going to measure your old unit 
to where the holes are. This one here, for example, is 11 inches up from the bottom and three and a half inches in. You're going to mark that on a piece of paper and mark these locations of where your new unit will mark your new unit where you're where you're going to put your holes. You're going to take a coat hanger and you're going to poke poke a hole down through the foam, right to the other side on your new unit, and just to make sure there's no pipes involved there. And then you're going to take a drill bit or a piece of pipe or anything you have available to drill a new hole into your new cooling unit. So you're going to go down through there and drill a hole. Now, after you drill a hole, you might want to widen the hole out a little bit, wiggle your pipe in there and get the hole the right size. And the reason we don't pre-drill these holes for you is because every fridge can be different. These holes could be located an inch in a different location. So we don't want to pre-drill them for you because they might not be in the right spot. That's why we leave it to you. So take the time, put your holes in your new cooling unit, and you'll be fine. Okay, you can see I've drilled two holes here already for the coat that was required. Now I'm going to drill this one. So they want three and an eighth up here, and they want 19. Is it Robert? I'm not sorry. Okay. Yeah. What's the what's the length, Robert? 19. 19. So we're going to come in here, 19, right there. 19 there. Hang on, I'll transfer this over. 19 there by 3 and an eighth. We're all right there. So that's going to be our hole location for our next hole right there. So I just take a drill and a drill bit and drill it down through. And go right through the paper backing in the back of the unit. And you can move the drill around, widen the hole out a little bit. And later on, if you find the hole's not large enough, you can take a piece of pipe or something and ream it out and make it as large as you need. It's just foam and everything, and you can't hurt anything doing this. So there's our other hole. So there's our three holes drilled. It takes about five minutes to do, and we don't put them in the new unit because I, I, I told you that they could be in different locations in different fridges. All right, here's the back of your old cooling unit. I'm going to install it in the new cooling unit. So I put it in the stack, just feed it in there, all right, and uh, it goes down in there. Shove it in there all the way to the bottom and hook it in the little hole that's provided there for you and see where the battle ends up. Well, you can see it sticking out here too far and we don't want that. We want that battle to be in that pipe about one inch where that's going to be. So we have to shorten the length of the rod on this battle. Very easy to do. Remove the battle from the cool unit. Alright. You're going to take... You want to take an inch off the length of this rod. So, you're going to unbend this little hook thing that holds the end of the baffle. You're going to cut this rod about one inch up, and you're going to put another hook in it and rehook the baffle on it. And that's the end of your problem. Very easy to do. Now that we've modified our baffle, I took an inch off of this rod and I rebent it and put it back on the baffle. We're going to shove her in, and we're all set with the baffle. You'll shove it in there, and you're going to see there's a little hole at the end of the chimney that the baffle, come in here, you'll see there's a little hole up in the chimney tube where this little thing, you squeeze it, and it clicks in that little hole, and it locks it in place so it won't come out like that. See, so now it's locked in place. Okay. You're going to see that the cooling unit was supplied to you with a tube of Mastic. Get yourself a caulking gun, cut the tip off, poke the hole in there to get the stuff ready to come out. And you're going to put a bead of Mastec on the pipe here. On this particular unit, you're going to squeeze it. And you want about a nice thick one inch, you know, or half an inch bead all the way along that pipe. Because this thermal Mastec helps transform the cold in this pipe to the fins that are in, that are attached to it inside the fridge. So put a nice bead like that on your tube here. All right. Very important that you do this. If, you, if you've noticed you've installed the cooling unit without doing this, you have to remove the cooling unit and make sure this step is done. The fridge will not cool properly without that nasty. 
Now that we've Maztec this, we're going to move the cooling unit up and out of our way. You can stand it alongside the fridge like that. We want to inspect the fridge hole, the, where the cooling unit is going to go into the fridge. So stand your cooling up out of the way like this. We want to look at this box. Make sure that when we remove the old cooling unit, there wasn't other great big chunks of foam that came off of your old unit and remained in this area. Now, there's a little bit of dust that I had from drilling those holes, no big deal. But if you've got big blocks of foam stuck in here that don't, that looks like you came off the old unit, you've got to remove that because our new unit's got to fit in there nice and flush. So anything that you see that's in here that stayed in here when you remove the old cooling unit, take a putty knife or a knife and cut it out of the way so you're back down to the original fridge box. So, inspect your fridge box. Now, if you look along this edge here, it's nice and smooth and relatively clean. There's a minuscule amount of foam here. That's okay. But, and look at this side. It's nice and clean. All right. But as you come down here, look at this. There's a lump of foam right here. So, that should come off because our unit's flat. And if you put our unit in, it's going to hit that block of foam there and obstruct it. Same as along here, there's some lumps of foam on the sidewall here. You want to clean them up out of the way. Follow this down, this is smooth here, this is okay. When you come over here, look, there's quite a large amount of foam from the factory stuck on this wall. So we're going to cut that off and remove this ridge of foam right along here because that could obstruct our unit from going in nice and flush and flat. So do a little work, dress up your box because all our sides of our foam are flat and true. So we want it to fit in the refrigerator good for you. A little piece like that could hold up the cooling unit from flushing out, right? Makes a big difference. A little bit in the corner there. Now that we've cleaned up the fridge box, you're going to see one of the hoses that we pulled up through the old cooling unit. This is a, a hose for the drip uh, tray in the fridge. Well, you can put it on now by holding inside here and pushing it back on your fitting here. All right, and then there's a little hose clamp here that allows it to clamp back on. So you just squeeze that clamp and put it back on there. Um, like so and then it's it's back in place easier to put on now than it is later so when the new cooling unit comes in remember you're going to feed this hose through the hole in the new cooling unit so it'll be up through the cooling unit ready to drain the fridge okay the holes we drilled in our foam block this is the water supply for your freezer for your ice maker so we're going to put that in the hole so you shove it down through the hole you've made and leave it there because it's going to be now the wiring harness we've made a hole for that you've got to shove your wires up in through there and get them up through because before we lay the cool unit in there so you're just going to kiss them up through there i take them it makes it a little easier for me it takes some time but figure out with it you'll get it it's not it's not something real easy or hard to do just keep yeah, get a friend to pull on some of them, whatever you got to do to get them through there. Alright, and if, they, if it's real tight, you can enlarge the hole a little bit, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Keep pulling them through here, and they can come and boom, I've got them. See, so as we drop the new unit in, that they're, they're out through here. Now we've got our drain tube for our other fins. So this one here, now I'm standing the cooling unit up a little lot longer, good. My assistant there is holding that, 
and we're going to shove that up through. Now, there's a clamp on this. If it fits through, fine. If it doesn't, well, we'll make it. Well, there we go, folks. Look at that. So you're going to shove that all the way up in there and find its natural path where it laid before. And as you drop your cooling unit down, it's going to remain in the right spot. All right. So, let that sit like that for a moment. Good. Now, put these all up in here. Ready to go where they got to go after we get this cooling unit in. We're almost ready to drop our cooling unit in the hole. Now we're going to put the cooling unit in the fridge. So you feed your freezer tools down in a spot where they go. And you're going to pull up some of the slack on the wiring that you have here. Make sure it's, the slack is taken out of it. Like so. Same as this old girl here. That's looking good. The freezer tube hole is... Let's see here. Ah, let's put a little bit on that. Make sure that freezer tube goes in the hole there. There. Good. And we're in, folks. Simple as that. Just take your time when you're doing this, and you'll get it right. Okay? Now, some of you people will call us up saying, well, it's not going down all the way. It doesn't seem to be fitting good. Well, you know what I've done before? Sometimes the box has swelled a little bit on the sides or it's an older fridge. If you've got to, to make that go, you can get right up here. You can't hurt the cooling unit. And you can walk around up here, push it down in the hole. Make sure it flushes down all the way. Can't cause any damage. And if you're a good heavy guy, that's better. So step around, get it down in there. And there, you know it's in there all the way. So the duck seal you had off the old uh, putty substance. If you need it and work it with your hands and you can get it back to a pliable, usable situation, you can reuse it. Now, if you can't get it back, it's all old and dried up. You, I've got some steel aluminum tape here. Um, you can tape up your hole. All right. It's just to prevent some cold air from coming in and around that pipe or that hose. Now, you can use duct tape. If you don't have any of this tape I have, use duct tape is fine. But you just want to tape off that hole to allow, uh, not allow any cold air to come up through that hole. And you'll do that hole and you'll do these two holes as well. If you can't rejuvenate your old duct seal. Now, also, you're going to tape up the head of the unit, that where the head of the cooling unit went in. Along here, you'll see our paper backing. It's flexible, it's there. Well, you it's not, it's just for aesthetics, basically, but you can take your tape, your duct tape or steel tape, start it on the edge here, and work it along, and tape up the edge. All right? So like that. All right, and you're just going to manipulate that, and you can go around the four, cor the four sides of the cooling unit and tape it up like that. Okay, now we're prepared to screw this unit down in place. Now, there's a few things you are going to encounter. We supply you with all the hardware that you need to do this. There's stainless steel bolts and screws and nuts, which is what you need. Now, this is a 516 screw. What you're going to first notice, let's say you think the cooling unit is not down all the way. Well, there could, our, our cooling unit foam block could be a quarter of an inch higher than the original one. It could be a quarter of an inch uh, shorter. And if you see the rail up like this, that's okay because the rail is going to go down and force it in. Once you stand and stood on this block, foam block, it's going to be down all the way. It's not going to go any further. And also the thin screws on the inside of the fridge are going to draw it in too because we want the contact to be good. Okay, now we've got the cool unit down into the fridge. Now there's a few variations you may see. These cool units are built to fit every fridge perfectly. But every fridge is not perfect. They vary a little bit. So when you get this thing down in here, you may see this, see this rail up here a little bit. Well, that can be manipulated, and that's going to pull down after a bit. Same as this hole is not perfectly lined up with this hole. Well, the 
Kuhn has to be manipulated, moved over different ways to line it up and get your friend to help you. I'm going to show you how to do that. Your wiring harness that you have, make sure that it's not going to get pinched under the rails when you screw things down. So make sure the harness is out of the way when you're ready to do it. There's a harness down there that is, is going to be out of the way. So let's say you're going to install one of the screws. And you say, well, the hole's not in the right place. Well, over here, you're going to see this hole is not in the right spot. You're going to take your 5 16th driver and you're going to get a friend to manipulate. Now, I'm going to start to screw in at an angle like this. All right. And now I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to draw that down. And boom, it draw it itself. It drew itself down in position. Okay. So now it's down in the right spot. Over here, this hole is lined up perfectly so we're all right on that one so we can we can just easily put that one down in place raise up on that a bit all right bring it in and draw it down boom so that one lined up perfectly you saw what i had to do on that one manipulate it a little bit now when we go down to the bottom screws here you may see that they're not perfectly in alignment well, we're going to manipulate the cooling unit again to align those screws. And what I'll do is I'll draw those. I'll take my screw here and add a bit of an angle, and I'm going to draw it down. There. So it's in. The other one's off a little bit. Well, that's okay. Just put your angle, your screw like this, and draw it down. Even if it goes in at a bit of an angle, that's fine. And it's drawing itself down into the right position. So that's okay. There's one other screw up here on the side rail. All right, and it may be way off. I can see it there, but it's off a bit. So again, take your screw, get it at an angle, all right, and start it in there, and it'll draw itself down into place. Even though it wasn't perfect, it will draw itself in. There, so that's fine with that. So there, you've got your cooling unit down, bolted down in place now. Um, so we're going to go on to a few other steps here in a moment. Okay, your two electric elements that you took out of your old unit have to be installed in our new unit. You're going to see on the stack here, there's a door right here that you unhook. All right, you manipulate the tin and open the door. Now, you're going to remove that door and you're going to peel back some insulation. Now, if the insulation is not moving there, take a little X-Acto knife. I'll get my knife. And we're going to expose the tubes that the elements have to go in. So, in this case here, we, I know the tubes are right in here. So, I'm going to take a little X-Acto knife and I'm just going to split the insulation like so. Just split it up a little bit. Now, by doing so, it's going to expose two little pipes in here. Two little casings with the element go in. So, I can feel them with my finger. They're right in there. There's two of them. One there, one there. Now, you push the insulation back out of the way. We've got to install your new, your, your elements back in there. So, you're going to take them, and you're going to slip one in one pipe. You can start it in the bottom pipe if you want, whichever pipe you want to start in. And you've got to make sure they're, they fit in the pipe, not alongside it, in it. They're like cigar-shaped pipes in there. So there goes one in there. On the top one, and I gotta feed the actually I'll start the bottom one in first. So, look, I'm feeding it in there. Use your finger and find the darn pipe, and you gotta get it in there. There, that one started in that pipe. All right, so you gotta work it down, wiggle it, get it in there, and then the second pipe in there. And you know what they look like because you took them out of the old unit, and you're gonna slide the other one. So, you gotta work those back down in there. There's one all the way in, and there's the other one wiggled all the way in. So they got to be put in there. Now, if they stick out a little bit at the bottom, don't worry about it. That means nothing. So there, they're in place. Now, you're going to take your cover, and you're going to put your cover back on. So you just take your door cover here. Yeah, and you can take your insulation, too, before you do it, and just tuck it back in over that area that you cut open. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, insulation provides that thing, so... Then you take your door and put it back on. And if they have to manipulate that a little bit to get by there, fine. 
manipulate that, it's, it, and then now you're going to squeeze and hook that door back up to, to the clip. And it takes some time, some friggin' around. I mean, it's not perfect, but it takes some doing sometimes. But you're going to squeeze that in. And it can be a little hard to deal with. Get a friend to help you. Um, in this case, I can move that up a little bit, hook it, and then bend it back down. So there, and then bend that down with my finger in there. Our door is back in place. On this particular mounting hole, this pipe here is impeding our way, and the hole wasn't perfectly lined up. This, there's a plate in this foam that is steel, so I'm going to take a screw, and I'm just going to put it in where the hole is in the rail, and I'm going to make a new hole into the fridge area to bolt it down. So look, I'm just going down and forcing it in there. And, and there's no hard pulling action on this cooling unit during the life of the fridge, so cinch it down where you can, and that's going to be fine. Now, when it comes to the wiring and whatnot, you're going to reverse what you did when you took it out. You're going to run. This wiring can go through the coils here now instead of underneath them if it's easier for you to do. So I'm going to pass those wires back down through the coil system here. All right, it's easier to pass them down through there than it is underneath. So I'm going to pull them down to have them ready to rehook the way I took them apart. This tube here is going to be swung around and it's going to be fed back down there to hook up underneath where we had that unhooked. So we're going to send that down into there. All right, we're going to send that back down. And that's going to have to hook up to here where I took it apart. That's fine. All right, um, same as my water line. I'm going to grab my water line here, folks. And this water line for your, freeze, for your ice maker, shove that up through the coils here. And remember, we took it off up in here. You're going to hook it back in there and you're going to hook it back down into your water valve down in here so you'll have your water supply so from here on in it's just re-hooking up what you took apart um, to get the unit ready to go back into the cabinet where it came from so the duct seal you had off the old uh, putty substance if you need it and work it with your hands and you can get it back to a pliable usable situation you can reuse it now, if you can't get it back, it's all old and dried up. You, I've got some steel aluminum tape here. Um, you can tape up your hole. All right. It's just to prevent some cold air from coming in and around that pipe or that hose. Now, you can use duct tape. If you don't have any of this tape I have, use duct tape is fine. But you just want to tape off that hole to allow, uh, not allow any cold air to come up through that hole. And you'll do that hole, and you'll do these two holes as well, if you can't rejuvenate your old duct seal. Now, also, you're going to tape up the head of the unit, that where the head of the cooling unit went in. Along here, you'll see our paper backing. It's flexible, it's there. Well, you, it's not, it's just for aesthetics, basically, but you can take your tape, your duct tape or steel tape, start it on the edge here, and work it along and tape up the edge. All right? So like that. All right, and you're just gonna manipulate that and you can go around the four, the four sides of the cooling unit and tape it up like that. You'll notice on your old unit, your lines and whatnot had duct seal around them. Okay, the duct seal is just a, a putty that helps prevent cold air from coming around. And it's old and dried up. If you want to, you can re-knead it again, like rub it, it's like putty, and just redo it again, and it should soften up so you can reuse it. Now, if it still stays real hard and crusty and it's not usable, no big deal. Take some tape. Um, I have some steel tape that we use, and you can tape off around this area, just not let the cold come through this hole. Okay. So the duct seal you had off the old putty substance. If you need it and work it with your hands and you can get it back to a pliable, usable situation, you can reuse it. Now, if you can't get it back, it's all old and dried up. You, I've got some steel aluminum tape here. Um, you can tape up your hole. 
all right? It's just to prevent some cold air from coming in and around that pipe or that hose. Now, you can use duct tape. If you don't have any of this tape I have, use duct tape is fine. But you just want to tape off that hole to allow, uh, not allow any cold air to come up through that hole. And you'll do that hole and you'll do these two holes as well. If you can't rejuvenate your old duct seal. Now, also, you're going to tape up the head of the unit, that where the head of the cooling unit went in. Along here, you'll see our paper backing. It's flexible, it's there. Well, you it's not, it's just for aesthetics, basically, but you can take your tape, your duct tape or steel tape, start it on the edge here, and work it along, and tape up the edge. All right? So like that. All right, and you're just gonna manipulate that, and you can go around the four the four sides of the cooling unit and tape it up like that. Okay, we're gonna reinstall the drip line from your fins back into the T down here that we took it off. Just push it on, take your pliers, and reapply the hose clamp to hold that in place. In there. I'm gonna squeeze this cap open and shove that line up in there. Okay, shove it in there a little bit. Okay, good. That's good enough. Yep, that's in there. Never come over a thousand years. Okay, now we're gonna bring up our electronic box assembly and get that ready to put back in place where it was. So we gotta manipulate it around here and find out the way it's gonna go. All right. So we can see the original two screw holes that this was into. So we're going to lay it in there and we're going to move some wires around and try to get it the way it was. All right. Make sure we're not pinching off any wires underneath it. Just tinker around there, get that out of the way. There. Now get these wires out of the way. Those are our grounds. So we're going to get that back in there. Now, there's two holes there that we had screws that held it in place. So that's where they're going to go right in there. So we're going to get them attached, and that'll screw that thing back down where it belongs. It's going to sit right in there like that. And then we're going to finish up doing our hookup of our burner. I'll show you there in a minute. So let me get this screwed back down in there. Okay, now that we've got wires back down to the general area we want, we're going to re-screw in our electronic box and get that back in its place. All right, so you put it right back where it was. Use the screws that you took out and um, have a container. When you do this job, I use the crisper of the fridge to put all the screws and stuff in. So have a container when you do the job with your screws kept in one area so you can get them back to you. So there, our little electronic box is back in its place. So now we have to basically just wire things back up to it. Now. Part of that electronic box, as you remember we took it apart, is the burner assembly. Now, the burner assembly on this one is, uh, it goes back three holes right here on the cooling unit. Now, it's very important to use the screws that we supply to you or the original screws that you had. I'll tell you why. The screws that you use for the burner are very short little stubby screws. They're not pointed, they're machine screws. If you use the wrong screws here, then if you use a sheet metal pointy screw and used it in there, it would go through the plate and puncture the pipe, and that wouldn't be a good thing. Make sure the three short little burner screws, which we supply in the package for you, or use your original. Okay, at this point, while you've got the burner in your hand, you've got to clean the burner out. Quite often, a lot of dirt and rust falls down into these little slats in your thing. Now, look at those slats in the burner. If they're all rusted out and there's holes there, like the slats are gone, you've got to get a new burner assembly. So, you've got to have good slats like that because the flame comes out of there. So, you want to blow some air through those. This is just a, an aluminum tube. You want to make sure there's no dirt left in this tube. Also, this orifice, this is your orifice. You would take a 10 millimeter wrench 
and unscrew this little brass orifice. And it unscrews out of there, take it out of there, soak it in some alcohol uh, for 10 or 15 minutes, and take your mouth and blow through this little orifice, screw it back in here, and tighten it up. That's where your propane comes out. And it shoots up this aluminum tube, and your flame comes out of these slats here. So make sure this system is clean and in good shape. All right, while you're here, you're gonna clean your orifice. Take a 10 millimeter wrench, and you're gonna remove that orifice out of that area, all right? Unscrew it. It just screws in there, and you're gonna unscrew it with your fingers, take it out of there. Because there's a very, very minute hole there, and it can get plugged with dirt. And if your flame is not appropriate for your fridge, if you don't have a good flame, then the fridge is not gonna work properly on propane. It's all based on proper BTU. So unscrew that with your fingers. Takes a little doing because there's not much room in there to work with. And then you remove the little orifice from it. We're going to take this and you put it in alcohol. Soak it in alcohol for about 10 or 15 minutes. When you're done soaking it in alcohol, you're going to you're going to blow through it real hard with your mouth. Blow through it real good. And then you're going to reinstall it the way I took it out. And this little washer that comes with it, make sure that's back on there. Don't, don't, make sure that washer's there. And you're going to put it back in place, screw it back in, and tighten it up. And that's cleaning your orifice. Now that we've soaked this orifice in alcohol and blew it out, we're going to reinsert it. Assert it. Now, never take a wire or a piece of pipe or, or, or wire no. or, or a nail or anything and put it in there. You'll ruin your orifice. It's got a very minuscule little hole with a tiny little screen in there. If you stick something in there to clean it out, you've ruined your orifice and they're about 30 bucks a piece. So just soak them, clean them, blow them out, and reinstall them. That's all you got to do. So you put it in there, and you screw it back in the hole. And it'll take a little friggin' around because there's no room in there to do it. But you're just going to get a screwdriver and try to... And make sure you get it started and screw it in by hand. You don't want to cross-thread it, but it takes a little doing and friggin', but you'll get it back in the hole. All right, we're going to reinstall the burner assembly. We're going to put our screws back in there. Remember the screws I told you? They've got to be the right, either the screws you took out or or stubby flat tip or stubby machine screws. Don't put in sheet metal screws. And there's three holes there. Tighten up one of them and the other two holes will line up for you. Okay. So there's one, and then we've got two more screws, one there and one there. Again, short little stubby screw. Do not put a screw in there that's a sheet metal pointy screw, or you'll ruin your cooling unit. go with those three screws in place your burner is in the right position and you don't have to worry about the position of the burner all right now we have this propane line to rehook up now when you're hooking up lines it's a flared line you don't need any seal in here duct tape you don't need any teflon tape it's a flared fitting just bring the line over attach it to the fitting bring the line over and screw it on make sure that it goes on by fingers. If you can't screw it on all the way with your fingers, means the threads are stripped. And don't put it on. Make sure you get it started with your fingers. And then tighten this up. And once you tighten that up, when you get the fridge going on propane, because you've had this line off here, when you hook up your main propane line to your refrigerator here, you have to take soapy water and check your for leaks in this fitting. And also check this fitting because you've had it off. So you're going to spray soapy water. You're going to look for any active bubbles around the threads or on the back side of the nut on both lines. And they always say no bubbles, no troubles. Okay, we're going to start hooking up wires and putting them back where they were prior to this assembly. This is the sparker wire. It just looks like a little spark plug wire. That goes on the end of that probe, sends a spark to the end of this probe, and sparks the unit. 
And that little probe, if it's fastened on properly, should be about an eighth of an inch above the slots of that burner. And if you do manipulate this in any way, do it very carefully, and you don't want to break the porcelain on this sparker. Now we're going to hook up our element wires. All right. Pretty easy. You're going to find them. They come off of the thing here. Here's one here. And it's black, so it's going to go on to the black wires. You can't go wrong. Black is black. Find our white one. It's down in here, uh, hiding on me. Gotta find it down in there somewhere. No, nope, that's not it. I gotta track her down, folks. Where is my other wire? Down in here somewhere. There's the white one right here. Here it was hiding. All right, white element wire to white wires on your element. There, your element is wired up properly. All right, these are the wires here. Tuck them in out of the way. Make sure your connections are good here. While you're in your board, check your two fuses. You got two glass fuses here. One is a three amp, it, it controls your 12 volt system. And the other is a five amp, which controls your 120 system. Make sure they're both good. If not, replace them. Okay. Okay. Now, there's a thermistor wire, it's a two prong wire that connects back to the board here. It only goes on one way, you can't get it backwards. And once it's in place, it clicks in there, so you can't get it on backwards there. It's down in there, it's plug and play. You're going to move these wires down, sort of out of the way, because there's a cover that's got to go on this box. Alright, you're going to see one blue wire coming off of a harness that goes in this electronic box. It doesn't hook up to anything, don't worry about it. It's a testing wire. You don't need to worry about it. So we've got the wires hooked up in there. All right. Um, so now we can put the cover back on this, this electronic box. So we'll find the cover. And a screwdriver. Now to put the cover back on, the wiring comes off the out of the bottom of it. See the cover? Yeah. See the cover here? It's opened up. So a lot of the wiring is going to come out of here. So tuck your wiring in a position where... It, you're going to get the cover on so the wiring is protruding out the bottom of the thing. All right. And there's two little prongs there that you push on to lock the cover in place. So make sure your wiring's out of the way and you'll feel it snap in like so. And then you got one Phillips screw here to screw down and your cover's back in place. Okay. All right. We're just hooking up the wires again. Putting things back where they belong. Ground wires and whatnot. Ground wires are important because if we got 12 volt system, if you don't have a good ground, things don't want to work properly. So you got to have that right working right. So it's just plug and play where you took things off, put them back where they were. All right, I'll tighten that up in a minute. All right, that's a ground wire. This is just a harness, and you can. We, we can tie wrap that in place after a bit there to figure out, you know, get it up out of our way. Okay. So here we've got our, uh, on this, he's got his, uh, his, his, uh, power wires coming to his fridge. He's got a black and a white over there, I think is what he's got there. Probably a black and a white. All right. So I'm going to go in there. All right, this is his white wire. This is going to go around over to a solenoid. It doesn't matter on a solenoid wire. It's, uh, it's either one works. doesn't matter. Okay, this water line, the customer doesn't have his ice maker working. So the water line, normally there'd be a water valve here that this would screw into. But uh, there's no water valve here. The customer doesn't use his, so it's not going to be used. So we'll let it hang out of the way there. This is his main power line here. One of his main power lines. He has a second cord here. Now this second cord um, would have been for his ice maker. And uh, where he doesn't use his ice maker or anything, it's not required to put back on the fridge. I don't think there's a reason to reinstall it. So we can let that go, but if we were to put it in, it's it's like these two wires here. It's a black to black and white to white on this, which would power his ice maker. But the customer doesn't use it, so I don't think we're going to install it. 
So there, we're done here. All right. Um, everything is done there. When the customer, when you reinstall this fridge into your motorhome or trailer, make sure you get the wiring correct. There's a plus and a minus for 12 volt. Don't hook them up backwards. Things won't work right. Um, real old motorhomes, they weren't forgiving. If you wired the motorhome up backwards, like negative into positive or positive into negative, it could blow a circuit in your circuit board here. So make certain that you know which is positive, which is negative. And if you look on the other side of the, of the wire block, it's pretty easy to tell. Your red is positive, your black is negative. So make sure that that's put in properly. Just reaffixing the uh, the wire to hold the wire stable, you know, so it doesn't get pulled on the end of the wires. Now we want to look at the wiring here now, folks, and we want to take and and tie wrap them or tape them or get them stabilized so they're not outside the bridge itself. So uh, what I do a lot of times, I take steel tape and I tape them up. I get them all done in one shot. So I take my steel tape, you could use duct tape folks if you have duct tape available. Alright, and you're going to start down at this end and you're going to put a, uh, some tape there to hold those wires stable. I mean, it's not critical that they... But you want to make sure they're there and out of the way because when this fridge goes in the cabinet, it's a tight fit. And you don't want these wires in your way when you're re returning it to the cabinet. So tape them up there. Alright. You can use tie wraps, you can use whatever you want to stabilize that wire system. Okay, your dust cover, your wind cover here actually goes in place here over your burner, right? Sits in there. Then this wind cover just goes on there and you line it up and there's two screws at the bottom you put in to hold this in here. And that's how that's fixed up. Okay, we completed installing the cooling unit. We're ready to stand it up and get this fridge ready to go into the cabinet where it belongs. Oh. All right. Step away, I'll do this one. Yes, you do this one. Okay, now that we've got the fridge standing, we've got to do a couple more things here to finish the job off. Number one, remember the screw system that we had in here, the six screws? We've got to put those six screws back in there to attach this cooling pipe back to the freezer tubes. Then we have to reassemble our freezer plates like we took off before, two screws here, two there, a couple up there, put that back in place. Then we're going to take the fin system, which is here on the floor, and we're going to reinstall it into the fridge. All right. Now you'll see some old Maztec on the pins. I'm going to remove that before I put them back on because we've got new Maztec there. So you'll be putting these back in the refrigerator and three at the bottom there and three on the other side. And they lift, they overlap each other when they're in there. So they fit in there properly. One goes into the other. Okay, now that we've got the freezer tubes all fastened in and lined, you're going to put your freezer plates back in place. So you're going to put that in there and you're going to get two bolts up in here to hold that in place. And then you're going to shove your freezer plate back in here, like so. And it's going to go up in there and line up and, and you'll be done. That goes up in there and you put your screws in there and hold that in place. Then you're going to take your fins. And the final step is we're going to take these fins and we're going to put them back in place here with the screws that hold them against the refrigerator and screw them back in there to hold these fins in place and that's your final step uh, and then hook your thermistor back to your fins and your fridge is done okay the key to installing the fridge back into the cabinet is several things you don't want the footing of the fridge here to scratch up the cabinetry so by doing this if you tilt the fridge forward okay Tim Tilt the fridge forward, tilt the fridge forward, have a friend with you, and we're going to lift and put the bottom of the fridge up first. So go Tim, just go easy up, 
Now, okay, forward, tail a little bit on your edge. There, good. Now, holding it there, tilt it upwards from the top. And there. And holding it, start locking it into the cabinet area. It's going to be wiggled side to side. It sometimes, uh, if it gets one way too much or the other, it doesn't want to go. Right. Just finesse that thing in there. Now, you're going to get the fridge in the cabinet three quarters of the way because then you have to stop and check the outside fittings. All right, reinstalling our wires. Take our ignition lock wires, put it in our little wire block, shove it in there, and tighten up the screw. That's one set of wires. All right, make sure they're in there snug and tight. There's one wire. Now, we'll hook up our ground next because we want to leave our pause for the last. So you shove your ground wire in the middle where it come out. All right, again, tighten up the set screw. All right. It's tight. Now, our positive wire, we've got to be careful not to touch any metal with this positive wire. Also, very important, this style of fridge, if you get the polarity wrong, if I was to put the positive on the negative side, negative on the positive side, I would destroy the circuit board inside this fridge. So vitally important to get the polarity correct. And I know that this is the bottom one, and that's on there. Don't touch any metal with it. Screw it in tight and quickly. And there we are, wiring hooked back up. All we have to do. Alright, hook up your propane line. Again, make sure you get it lined up straight. Don't cross thread the propane line. If you can't screw this nut on by hand, it's not in the proper position. Turn it until you can get it on by hand, and only then tighten it up. Once you get this nut nice and tight, you get yourself some sudsy soapy water, turn on your propane fuel, and test around this nut and fitting that you have no propane leaks. And that finishes the installation of the refrigerator.